Yeah, he's asking, and I think probably everybody heard, he's asking why not snares, and snares are more effective, and that's true. Uh, the issue with snares is non-target catch. And so we want to see if we can reach this population as it stands in Montana, with Montana's access with, with that extra effort of foothold without going to the snare just because of the incidental yeah. catch. You're reducing the effectiveness, you're trying to get rid of these wolves. You're reducing, yeah. you're shooting yourself in the foot before you get started. Yeah. We are reducing the effectiveness. I can't argue that. That's right. I applaud that you're trying to manage wildlife. <coughs> Where did that come from? But my question is, Good this, for you. is this 2012 BC or is it 2012 AD? <laughs> We know we have to manage these creatures. They're creatures of God, too. How can we justify trapping an animal? Which of you in this room would like to have your leg or arm in a trap for one second? Oh. How can we, are we, are we prehistoric creatures or do we have Yes, we do. Would you please? I'm yeah. trying to speak. Um, when we have a speaker speaking, let's have the dignity to listen to what they got to say. I'm not going to get into a debate. Uh, we want to hear what everybody's got to say. Again, each animal needs to be dispatched quickly and as painfully as possible. Do we believe in the golden rule that goes for are we stewards of this planet? How can we justify putting an animal in a trap by his arm or his leg? Could we do it? Could we stand it? Could we tolerate even one second? There is no justification in a civilized society to do that. Yes, kill them if you have to with a, a bullet and, and dispatch them. But there is no one that can justify a, a prehistoric insensitivity. These animals have pain. If you've had biology in high school, in college 101, or comparative anatomy, we know that these animals suffer. There have been animals that have chewed their legs off in these traps. How can we, how can we as human beings, how can we be humane and do this kind of thing and justify it? Kill all the animals you want, but do it fast and do it as painlessly as possible. trappers and that's what fish wildlife and parks are interested in doing. Mike, I showed you this book earlier before the meeting. This book is the Alaska Trappers Manual. In this book, they, and snares are one of the number one ways of catching wolves in Alaska, just like it was in Idaho. And this book shows that you can set snares without catching animals you do not intend to catch. It's all in education. No one here, I'm sure not all of us in this room, can go out and jump in an airplane and fly it. But we all took the class, we took, got, did the study and learned we could. Trapping is the only way we're going to get a control on wolves. Only way. The only other way, and you, you know, I've, I've listened so many times to people claim that there's not, there has not been enough science applied to managing wolves. Well, the science has been going on forever in other parts of the country, of the world. Our biologists have pretty much ignored what it takes to control wolves like in Russia. It's aerial gunning. They get most of their wolves taken out with aerial gunning. They spend $45 million a year to keep the wolf population somewhat in check. So, if we're going to trap, we have to have those snares. If you don't allow snares, you aren't trying. Well, this is a good time to remind you that these are all good comments, and that's what the purpose of tonight is, is to get your comments in. So be sure and write them down and go online and put them on there, because that's how they're going to win directly. Uh, uh, I'm a relative recent uh, um, comer to Montana. I got here as fast as I could. Um, 
been here for about 14 years now. Uh, the, one of the questions that I have, uh, you, you're, you've got a mandatory 48-hour check, uh, and that's by the trapper, I'm presuming. Um, what resources does FWP have to enforce this ruling that has, has been declared? Well, we do have an enforcement branch in Wardens, and we don't have near enough, but we do have them. And, and most certainly, it's going to be a priority. I can't say that how incredibly effective this year I'm going to be with every trapper, but, but it'll certainly be a priority to, to watch the trapping season as close as we can in both seasons. Since you've talked about the trapper orientation, but what is that consistent? Can just anyone go to this and become a trapper, or is it, is it like an hour long? Is it two days? What is it? We're developing it, even as we speak, so I can't give you a very good answer. The, it's been, they did that in um, Idaho for the trappers over there, and it was pretty intensive. Um, and a good thorough orientation as to specifically wolf trapping techniques, some of the things to watch out for, and so forth. So we're envisioning a day or two to give you order of magnitude as compared to an hour or two, just to give you an order of magnitude. Um, yeah, Mike, I'd like to know what your own biologist guidelines are for trap checks. How long do they leave wolves in traps? And, um, and I've heard anywhere from uh, four hours to 12 hours and 24 hours the maximum. Now, I know wildlife services, their maximum is 24 hours. And so, if, uh, are there any, I was hoping Ms. Bradley might be here, is there anybody here that can answer that? You just did, you were accurate. <laughs> That's what we do. Okay, so, and why is that then? Does that have to do with uh, temperature? Does it have to do with incidental catches? Or is it solely to you know, protect the animal you have to be, your study, calling them? I mean, it would seem to me that incidental catches have to come into this. So, you know, if you're not checking it every, at least a minimum of 12 hours, you've got some other animal out there suffering and, and dying. So, I mean, we're here saying, well, 48 hour trap check, that kind of flies in the face of what your own biologists are doing. Well, they're doing it to capture and live capture and release wolves, and so that's a little bit different. And what this I think what we're talking about here is the institution of trapping, which has been with us for a long, long time. Um, and we manage that. That's, a, that's an activity that we support. We manage it. Our folks do it. Um, and we're saying that that, similar to hunting, is the public's way of using the resource and providing management technique, and in this case, the trapping is essential as a part of the technique to actually manage this population. And in the long run, this population will be better off through that harvest because it'll make a place for it in the society in Montana. So it's all about sociological reasons, is what you're saying? That's wildlife management. Um, we did buy wolf tags in Montana, and I probably spent 25 days in the field hunting deer, elk, uh, all the different species. You hunt those during the day, and these wolves are not out during the day. You don't see these predators during the day when you're hunting elk and deer. And so basically, we hunted wolves in Idaho. And they had a season that started last Labor Day weekend, and it runs through next June. They really know what a season's all about over there. And I had shots of wolves with my electronic collars in three days in Idaho. We thought the Montana wolf season was a joke. <coughs> and that's why we didn't put as much emphasis there. If we had this kind of legislation here, we would put more money and time and effort toward wolf hunting in Montana. So I want to make one other comment. Um, my understanding was when Bob Reen voted in 1995 for reintroduction of wolves, 
was 30 breeding pairs and 300 wolves. And I'm seeing numbers in the 600s here. Wow. Did somebody's calculator break? Science took over. What, what can be done? I mean, we are getting more aggressive here, but uh, I'll tell you what, if you want to talk about pain and agony, uh, these, these elk calves and, and uh, cow elk and even the bulls are being ripped to pieces. That's right. How ethical and fair is that? Right. I have a young hunter. He can't get it out now because of this. We, we hunt in the West Fork of the Bitterman, and they're gone. They're, they're amazingly gone. And they've been ripped to shreds. You want to talk about pain and agony? We've seen it. I could take you out there 20 minutes and show you some bones and, and skin and, and nothing left. It wouldn't take long. So we need this kind of legislation. We have to be able to take the gloves off. We'll go get them if you'll let us. Right now in Idaho, they're going to get them. Montana, we're just now coming around to this idea that we have to manage these animals, just like every other predator. We're at 600, was it 653? The original agreement was 300? Anybody see an imbalance there? Yikes. I'd just like to echo uh, his statements. Um, I think the biggest reason most people haven't bought tags is because you just don't see wolves when you're out hunting. If you're an ethical hunter and you're doing it by the rules, uh, it's the hardest species to hunt that there is. And uh, and then you, you become more personally engaged in it if you've got, I've got some land and I see what happens around my place. I see the numbers dropping of elk and deer. I see my horses get harassed. I lose a dog. And you take it personally, so you really try to hunt the wolf legally. And it's just a, a very, very different game. It's the hardest species I've ever tried to hunt. Completely unsuccessful. Um, I think we ought to be able to, to take these by, by rifles, clean, quick kills. But we're going to have to do something different, as the gentleman said, because we're just not getting there. And there are a lot of motivated people out there that are trying. But, uh, but we're, they, they're nocturnal. Um, unless we all get night vision and join the, uh, the military, it's going to be tough to kill these things with conventional techniques like they've been using. I'm going to get up here. I'm not leaving. I'm getting something to drink. So go ahead. I'm listening. Jerry's back. <laughs>